People will often say to me, oh, if you wait long enough, it'll form. No, time is your enemy. Inorganic chemistry, time is your enemy. You make something, you right away store it in a precious place because if air hits it or ammonia hits it, it falls apart. They're kinetic products. Very often they're the kinetic product, meaning that they form first, but they're not the most stable. The most stable is junk. Reagent addition order is critical. You have to add A and then B and then C. You can't just throw it all together. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Try cooking, you know, an elaborate French dinner. I bought all the stuff. I just added it all together. And it, chemistry is the same way. You can't do that. How does nature know what to add? How does it add one and then the other and then the other? And when these guys do their prebiotic chemistry, say, look what we got. Yeah, because you added A and then B and then C and you bought A and you bought B and you bought C. The parameters of temperature, pressure, solvent, light or no light, pH, oxygen, no oxygen, moisture, no moisture, has to be carefully controlled to build complex molecular structures. The characterization at each step is essential, but hard in a prebiotic system. How do you characterize it? Biology characterizes everything. Everything that's made, enzymes check it. And if it's not right, another enzyme comes and rips out that, that wrong base and fixes it in the DNA. But this is a prebiotic world. You don't have any of this. How do you bring up more starting material from the rear? Any, from the rear, anytime you want to make a complex system, you, you, you go along and then you run out of starting material because you were trying many things, and then you go back and you make some more, and then you go back and you... How does nature go back? It's, it, it, it just spent a billion years building something, and now, uh-oh, I ran out of starting material. Well, just go back and make some more. Uh, I would, but I never kept a laboratory notebook. I forgot what I had done a billion years ago. You, you see the problem. How many, how many organic chemists are here? Okay, do you know what I'm talking about? Isn't this true? It just doesn't work. None of this works. And this is what they publish paper on after paper, and it gets into nature and the science. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> and there's no accounting here. There's no accounting. So one guy makes ribose, in a 0.1% yield with all the other carbohydrates in there, and they identify it by mass spec. And then the next researcher starts with ribose. Say, okay, ribose has been made, so we'll start with that. Now, no, no, start with the junk that he made. You don't buy ribose with all the chiral centers in place that came from a natural source. None of it works. So critical for life is the origin of information. So this is just making the basic molecules. Now you got the whole information. It's not just the, the nucleic acids, it's the order in which they're arranged. The information is primary, the matter is secondary. Information is primary. You can write information on a piece of paper, then transfer it to your computer, put it up in the cloud, and now it's in some server form. The, 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 the matter can change. The information is primary. This is why we believe that in Christ, when we die, we live forever with him because the information is stored in the cloud. <laughs> it is. It is retained in the cloud. We are very much with him. The body can be cremated. The body decomposes. That's just the matter upon which it was stored for that time. And in fact, even the, the information that's in my brain is changing all the time, the matter. Your body is replaced every seven years. Every molecule of your body replaces out. So all the molecules are replaced out all the time, constantly replaced. So your matter is changing all the time, but the information is the primary part. You see what I mean? The information, the code. So even if you had all of these molecules, you can't do anything because you don't have the information. So the origin of life, so say we assemble a dream team. I'll give the dream team can't even make the first cell, uh, there's an error, the first living cell if given all the chemicals uh, for the information code. So in other words, the mystery of the origin of life does not permit the opening of the door on a biological evolution. It's difficult to discuss biology without life. You can't start life. So say I assemble a dream team. Say we're not in caves anymore. You're in your best labs in the world, and I get the 
top 100 synthetic chemists, the top 100 biochemists, the top 100 evolutionary biologists, and the top 100 whatever else you want. And I give them limitless funds, and I give them all the carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins that they want. And I'll even give it to them in the assembled order. All the DNA, all the RNA, I'll give you the information. You tell me the code you want. I'll give it all to you. Now you take those and just make me one cell, the simplest of living organisms, a cell. Make it for me. They'll be like, you're crazy. You can't, we can't assemble one of those. They can't. They can't. You say, well, oh, what about artificial cell? Artificial cell is you take a piece from one cell and you put it in another cell. You look what I made. It's like if I take the engine. When I, I, I used to work on cars a lot as a kid. You take the engine out of one car, you put it in another car. It's like, hey, I made that car. Not you take the engine out of one car, you put it. That's what they call, you know, artificial cell. You try to make a cell ab initio. I'll give you all the chemicals. You can't even build it. But in some cave somewhere, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Clueless. If you just Google my name, James Tour, Origin of Life, on YouTube, or just go to YouTube. Just YouTube, just go to YouTube and, 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 and put James to Origin of Life. I gave a talk at the University of Waterloo for an hour and 15 minutes. It's straight, boom, boom, just, just, just fire <laughs> upon, upon this group, just trying to explain the problems with Origin of Life. And none of my colleagues will say a word. They all act as if they've never seen it. I sent them the URL. I say, what? Well, they, they don't even look me in the face because they don't want to have to address this because they know it's a bunch of nonsense. It's nonsense what they're publishing. 